Yeah. <laughs> now I'm recording. Okay. So the people who just now started recording, I apologize. I did five minutes ago. We are going over topic reviews for this. Sorry, I'm getting double feedback from my headphones. One second. Sorry, we're doing, I'm going over topic reviews for topic three and four because last exam, Grubbs took questions straight from the reviews and put those onto the exam. And so in case that trend begins again, we're just going to go over the exact same questions. Now, some of the questions, the one questions to pull on with the later ones. So what I just did is I kind of went over these things. So if I were to do this, I can undo, and I just name these structures. So hopefully this part should be easy, but there you go. Okay, now they should be caught up. Cool. I gotta get rid of this. Okay. Number two is looking at certain branches. These branches we want to look at are very, very particular. Oops, like this. Yeah. One carbon, two carbon, three carbon. So what is that? How do you say three carbons? Huh? Propane, propyl. normally, right? But since it's an R group, it's not propane, it's propyl, right? But if you see this branch configuration where the bond is in the middle carbon, right? It's not just propanol, it's isopropanol. The reason the iso is there is because it's bonded to this middle carbon right there. That creates a not as uh, a great say, for example, it's a C3 bond where the carbon there is bonded to three different things. Three, sorry, it's bonded to three given carbons and has an H there. That's going to be very, very important. You guys go over to these things called mechanisms later on in the class, which would be next exam. We're going to go over things called SN1, SN2, and reactions like that. And those look at these specific type of carbons, like C3 carbons and C1 carbons and C2 carbons to do bonds with. Right? That's why isopropanol has a special name. Make sense? Yeah. One, two, three, four. Four carbons is called what? Butane. Good. It's called butane. Right? But since we have an R group here, it's not butane, it's butanol. Except the fact that it's in this Y shape like this, right? It's considered iso, butanol, butol, butol. Yep, it's called isobutol. And it's which you have a bond with one and it makes this Y shape. Yep, pretty much. Good. Okay. One, two, three, four. Now, you know, right? It's not ISO, this is SEC. What does SEC mean? It means secondary. You bond and form a secondary carbon. So, to a tertiary carbon, you make a secondary. This right here is a tertiary carbon because it has three things, three carbons bond to it, right? This guy is a secondary carbon. So it makes a secondary. That's why it's called sec butanol. One, two, three, four. Yep, it's butanol bond. You talk, right? And since it forms a what? Tertiary here. But when you kind of draw this out, what it kind of looks like, this letter, what does this letter look like? T, so it's called tert or T butanol or tertiary butanol. It forms a tertiary carbon, carbon bond to four other carbons. So tertiary or, or T butanol. You need to know these uh, branches 
because he's going to put these in the, he's going to put these on the exam, and if you don't know them, you're going to name them wrong, and you're going to lose points. Can I guarantee he's going to put one naming question with at least one of these groups on there? I can almost guarantee that because that's grubs. Sense. Any questions? Zoomies? Doing great. Cool. If you have questions, yell at me so I can know. Cool, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Okay. Names. First rule of naming. What's the first thing you look for? Longest chain. Someone said on Zoom. Longest chain. Longest. Good. Right? Cardinals. What else? Alphabetical. Okay. What about branches? Okay, alphabetical. That's true. Let's put that too. Oops, that's mm, nope. No, it's A L E. Select says kicking in. Uh, oh, yeah. Alphabetical order. Cool. Yep, branches. So you want the one with the most or least branches? Most. Most. You want the most amount of branches. Yep. And then what? Numerical order, right? Highest priority goes to the biggest molecule, one with the heaviest weight, right? So, sorry, I spell mistake. Uh, I didn't really say it, but it's heavy, the heaviest. Cool. Order heavy use molecule. Okay. Because this is on here, he's gonna give you a, like a structure and you're gonna have to name it. Makes sense, right? Or he's gonna give you a name of a stru structure and you have to draw it out. That will be on the exam. At least one or two questions. Okay. Let's talk about something that will be heavily tested because he loves it. It's these things. Right here. So what are these molecules? The chair diagrams. Good job. So chair diagrams can either be axial, in which anything is going up or down, right? Technically up or down, doesn't really matter. Okay. Or we have things in the axial. So this is axial, right? Axial. Axial. Or equatorial, which is kind of off the side, like that. Okay. The hardest ones to know is the axial for these inner ones. All right. Be very careful. If they are drawn at an angle at all, they are uh, not axial, sorry, equatorial. They're equatorial. Axial will be straight up, up, down, right? Any angle on these middle ones will most likely, I mean, 95, 95% yeah, so you see back, 95% of the time, they will be examples of equatorial, anything coming off there. Does that make sense? Well, the hardest one to do, even for me, they kind of trip me up sometimes. But here's your axial, here's your equatorial. Carbons. Knowing this and the way cyclohexane is in the chair conformation, we can do some fun stuff right here. So we only have, in reality, three forms of cyclohexane chair conformations one, two, one, three, or one, four. Why don't we have one, five? Just loops back around the chain. What? Say it again, Jacob? It just loops around the chain again. Exactly. It loops around. So I'll show you guys. 
One, two, three, four, five. Here is one five. Or it's more number correctly, it's what? One, two. Correct? So you can only ever have one, three, one, two, or in purple or pink, one, five. Sorry, one, four. One, four. One, three. One, two. The only possibility. Anything else, it just repeats. Okay. <clears throat> Doing this, we can assign cis-trans. So if you have an axial, an equatorial, or an equatorial, an axial, that's cis for one and two. Same thing. Four, one, four. Trans, oh, yeah. Trans would be AA or EE. Okay. So, oops. You know what's in? Okay. So normally, right, when we do cis and trans, cis means same, right? So that's why this should make sense, correct? And trans should mean different. That's why this should make sense. Because of that, right, and the way the spacing works, one three is the most stable chair confirmation. Out of all the, all the chair confirmations, one three is. You can either know that because they have molecules the furthest apart they can be, all right, besides one four, so it's not that. It's because they follow the cis trans, like you guys would know and kind of think of without kind of changing the rules. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes, it does. Work. Can you see when I draw off on this side right here? Zoomies? Yeah. Okay. Yep. So make sure. Because words are weird. So if I draw a chair diagram, do, do, do. I hate drawing chairs. And it's like, um, bum, bum, bum. one, two, three, four, five, whatever, it's six. Close enough. Okay. I draw one here, one, two, three, and I draw one, and they're both up, right? Scissor trans, both up and down. They're both axial. Scissor trans. Right? Cis. Cis. The reason I'm saying this is because if you have to draw the structure from the chair diagram into a cyclohexahexane, you're going to both put them in either brackets or Wedges, right? Wedges or dashes. Because they're the same, you have to know they're the same. Correct? So they are. And that should help going from chair to cyclohexane. Okay. See that goes over right here? Cool. Now it's time for everyone's favorite part naming. I have a question. One sec, what medicine? What's the question? Uh, for the the chair confirmation, whether it's dashed or wedges, does that correlate with anything on the table or does it matter? It does. So you're always going to look through the table first, right? Yeah. And if you look at the table, I do. Okay. You're going to look at the table. And then you're going to look at where the bonds are. So since these guys, are, since this guy's going up, right, it's going to be a wedge, right? And since one, three, and they're both ax, axial, they both have a wedge. If that was going, one of the, like one of them's going down, it would both be dash, right? So it's either one of these. So it's in a weird shift between those. Because you really don't know which one it is, right? Because my drawing is so awful. 
So up is a wedge and well, axial up is wedge and axial down is dash. Yes, axial up is wedge, axial down is mainly down. You know how it's which how it should be, right? Yeah. Okay. What about trans? Is it the same scenario? Nope. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. You do a trans for, I'm gonna go back one second. For trans, all right? Uh, it's kind of the annoying part. Oh, sorry. Trans would be this one right here. Nope, it would be this one. My bad. So this is trans right here. Yeah. So one to be wedge and one to be dash. Make the wedge one axial and the dash will be exitor, exitorial. That's just how it would be. She was, someone was asking for one three, if it was trans, which would be axial equatorial or exatorial, that one, right? If you have an axial one, it's more, it's better to make that one wedged and the other one dashed. But as long as you keep them opposite, it really doesn't matter. Should, it really should not matter as long as they're opposite to each other. Okay, any questions? Cool, now Madison, might helped. Yeah, I did. Thank you. Cool, 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 cool. Names. You guys love this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Is it the longest cumber chain? Is this too far away for you guys? Is it make bear? I can't make better for me too. Okay, I'll make it bigger. Make it bigger. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Longest carbon chain? Yes or no? Yes. Most chains? Is the longest, it's the longest chain with the most branches, right? Yeah, good. Like it has this guy. So we have blue and pink. Which one highest priority? Blue or pink? Blue has higher priority. It's first in number, but not naming. Well, technically, it would also be first and name because it's E to M. One, two. Nope, it's two. So the name is what? One, two, three. Three ethyl. Yes, because. E become E becomes four M, right? Would it be four ethyl? Oh, you're right. My bad. Yep, you're correct. It is four. And it's counted. Oops, that's wrong. Sorry. Four ethyl. Five methyl. One, two, three, four, five. You want ethyl to have the smallest non number. Yeah, it weighs more. Nope. So since this guy's bigger, it has to have priority in numbering. Since it also starts with an E, that goes before M. Okay. Here's also where a lot of people mess up. It's just you put heptane. Heptane. Okay. A lot of people want to put a hyphen, hyphen right here. It does not go there. It's always methyl that. Okay. 
Soon as we look, then do it. Nope. Why would he do that? <laughs> he keyed it wrong. There's no way. Why would he give methyl a higher ranking than methyl? It makes no sense. What well, his key's wrong again. He's been talking about numbering um, pretty much if it has, I guess, the same like C CH3. He usually just goes off of the smallest number carbon in the chain. Three, four, one, one, two, two, three. Sure, I guess. I don't like this. I do not like the answer. Okay, sure. I hate I hate naming. Because guess what? If you guys go through chemistry, there's like ten more rules. Every every topic you guys learn in OCHEM two, there's like twenty more rules you have to add for naming. My bad. It's one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, yes, you're right. Because you want to give that guy technically a low number two. Even though it makes no sense, you want to give it a higher priority, whatever. I mean, technically, since it's, it's, it's for either way, that's why. The trick question, I don't like it. So what's going on here? Is since it's four, one, two, three, four, it's four going. I wanted the blue one. It's four going this way and four going this way, right? It's four either way. It's better to go, it's better to give the methyl the lower priority number because it makes it lower priority. That's what's going on here. Yep. Yeah. Four and three. So yeah, Oh yeah, there should be. My bad. Okay. There should be. Right there. My bad. Yeah. Next one. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five. Two, three, four, five. So what's main structure? What? Cycle what? Pentane. Pentane. Cyclopentane. Because it's a ring. This guy right here is a bigger it's a bigger molecule, right? But we don't give it priority because we have two methyl groups right here, right? So technically that guy right there is our first priority. Because two methyls weigh more than one bromine. So that's one, that's two. But bromine does go first in our name though, because it's a B. So bromo one one di. Methyl, one second. Cyclo. Okay. What's up? Did someone say something? No, Zoom. No one said anything? Okay. I'm just going crazy. Thank you, Jacob. Yes, you do. Yes, thank you. Moving on to the next one. Go down, go down, go down. Okay. This is abomination. One, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's what? Octane. Good. Oh, ten. Let's use. Let's use green. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It does. You're gonna start this way because it gives the lowest priority to. Well, technically, no, it doesn't. You could start theoretically this way too. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Works the same way. As long as you start one of the, those carbons I did at, that's where you're going to start. The reason you really go like this is because it gives the lowest priority to each of the branches as possible. So, how many ethyl groups do I have? Two. And they're on carbon what? Either six or three. Yep. So three, six, diethyl, and then it's two, seven, dimethyl, octane. Nope. The die is just telling you how much. Nope. Well, no, it's it's a B. I think that will turt. Yes, those would. They would matter. They would. They would matter in naming. Yeah. If you compare, like, example, if you had like a butane and an isobutyl. Right. Um, the ISO would have come later in naming than the butanol. It would matter with that example. In that example, not other one. If there was no other butane, then it would you would take the B before anything else. Yeah, if there's two butyls, the I matters. If not. The beak matter is more small. Okay, okay. zoomies make sense. Yes. Okay. Or you could vice versa. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It doesn't matter. So each have five. Five, five, die. One, two, three. One, two, three. Propol. No hyphen there. Not any. Right. Five, five, die. Propol. Not any. So if he's gonna pull for one of them, which one do you think he's gonna pull? Which one do you think he's gonna pull? The hard one. This guy looks scary. And 10 20 point. He pulls one and anything that else. He's probably pulled that one. That's scary looking. Okay. Let's go. So here we're drawing all possible cyclohexanes. Well, dimethyl cyclohexanes. First one. One, one, dimethyl, right? Cyclohexane. That's your first one. It's the only one you'll have one, one, right? Because you, you can't have the same one repeating, correct? 
Yeah, it's one, two. But you can't just have one, two, because it's too easy, right? Instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the which and dash. So that's one, two, what? Scissor trans. Wedge dash. Trans. The EA thing only is for chair. Trans. Oh, that's bad. Let me draw it again. Ooh. Okay. Okay. One, two. But now it's what? Sis. Eternally, it could be dashes. It doesn't matter. As long as it's sis and trans. Does that make sense? What part? What part could you see? So what did you do? I didn't realize that you could Yes. Because those are different molecules, right? Because these are all possible forms of cyclohexane you can have. Or dimethyl at least. One, two. So it's one, three, cis, cyclohexane. This is dash, dash, one, three, oh, uh, tran, uh, sorry. One should be, one should be, how good is this? One should be a wedge. Be trans. My bad. What? Yeah. Because the only options for cyclo, for cyclo is one, 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 right? One, two, one, three, and one, four. Because if you go any more, you just go back, so you just start resetting. Because there's only six possible options. So there's no one five or one six. So no, it's I'm just abbreviating. You would just put dimethyl cyclohexane. So you're always going to put this dimethyl cyclohexane and the name. I just want space. So for like a set one, you might just want to one Yep. Hyphen. Yep. So wait, should would it what? be dimethylcyclohexane after like one three cis? Like how would it be if you when you write it all out? One second. How you want to do it? Okay. This is how you're going to do it. I'm taking this from Pug Pubkin, which is a database for chemistry. So Grubbs can't argue with me if he has some weird way of doing it. So it's cis one two dimethyl. Cyclohexane. You put the cis or trans first. Yes. I'm just abbreviating for saving on space. So cis 1, 2, dimethyl cyclohexane. Cis 1, 3, di di dimethyl cyclohexane. Trans 1, 3, dimethyl cyclohexane. There you go. Make sense, Athena? Yeah, thank you. Of course. Oh, I hate I flashbacks from my OKM class. Or 
cycle which dash trans for dynamic cyclo okay that makes sense Still confused? Justin, you good? Okay, so it's still confused. Yes. Except this last part. The dimethyl is one whole thing because of the name. Yeah, I know. I mess up the hyphen a lot too. That sucks. It's he'll he'll take away, for example, each question is five points. He'll take away a point out of a five question for a five point question because the hyphens are wrong. I know. He can't do test models. He tried doing test models one time and the it hated his questions, so he can't do it. Is that test models? Is it you don't do it in person? Don't do it in person at all? That's stupid. So there's no drawing then? You don't have to draw any molecules? No, but he'll give us options that we have to choose from. Oh. I don't like that. Yeah, they're usually pretty similar. They're just like, you know, one's right. I don't like that. Because you can get more born in points if it's on paper than Tesmos. Yeah. Okay, so let's go on. Next one. What's going on here? Which one's more stable? But we're looking at chair. So if you weren't here last time, what's more better with chair diagrams is stuff wants to be equatorial, right? You think about it, if you're holding a weight or something, holding weight above your head does seem easier, but if you hold it up until your arms give out, you drop the weight in your head and you die. Not fun, right? So you want to hold the weights out in front of you so when, if they drop, they don't do anything, right? That's how I think about it. Another other thing about it is the molecules as far away as possible from each other. Because you're both axial, you're both going straight up, right? And then that basically just means you're in each other's electron space, which gives you steric hindrance, which is bad because you give energy. And the chair diagram, the whole point of the chair diagram is to have no steric hindrance and no steric strain at all, or torsional strain, because it wants to be as stable as possible in the chair diagram. So that's why a chair can flip to get everything at once in its equatorial plane resistance. What's up? No. Here's how you do it. Easy way. One, two, three, four. One and three, both what? Dashes, right? Scissor trans. Cis, which means they're the same number, right? Assume it's equatorial. It's because it can. So cis is equatorial? Nope. Because of the chair, it's a chair diagram, right? Uh, this double thing is kind of driven crazy. Okay. So it's one and three. And since they are both dashes, no, sorry, wedges, no dashes, right? They have to be the same thing, correct? So it's because it's six. I just not drawing in a chair because I don't like drawing a chair. Chairs take forever to draw. So easier time is just to look at it. One, three, six, right? So will it be equatorial or both be axial? Most stable. So always try to make it the best possible, right? Which would be equatorial. So we're gonna assume they're equatorial. That's why. They could be both axial, right? Both going down or both uh, equatorial. 
<laughs> you mentioned yesterday, but um, equatorial is more stable or is it less stable? More stable. Yes, equatorial is more stable than axial. Well, we don't know. What about four? What's four? Trans, right? In chair diagram, trans is what? Same, right? They're the same one. For a chair diagram, train, chair, and, yeah, the other, sorry, double talking set parts. Because they are one and four, right? And one and four on the chair diagram we just did above, the chart, right? One and four to be technically trans, they both have the same thing. So this is also equatorial. Because remember, one and four, things that are cis are going to be EA or AE, trans, right, are both going to be EE. Yeah. Because we have to assign what structure is this one. Yes. That's why. Make sense to me? Yeah, we're good. Okay. So all these, most likely, most stable, right? One, two, three. Yeah. Ones be axial, ones be equatorial, because they're because they're trans, right? So um, you can assume that this is E or A, right? It'll be A, E. It doesn't matter, just assume one, right? And then one, two, three, four. Trans, right? Sorry, sis, you're sorry, sis. So it's gonna be the exact opposite, opposite. So the options you have here is A, E, 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 or E, Right? E, A. Doesn't matter, it has one axial, axial, right? Makes it automatically less stable than one. So that's to go one, two. What's on the ends with one, two? Okay, let me try. One, two, three. Okay, one, three, says. Equatorial, equatorial. You can assume that, right? Or axial, 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 correct? Okay. But over here, this has to be the opposite. So E, A, so the same thing, right? One, four. It's either, it's either A, or B. You can argue either one. You can argue either one. Yes. You can. Mm -hmm. He says A because he made these two ones A, and I don't see how. Because you can argue either or. Shane? Yeah. So I get that we can argue either one, but yes. when with you knowing grubs, which one would he be more apt to select for us for the test? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Season do A, but you can argue for A or B. Yes, but you can go argue. You could. Yeah. No, he's just weird. He's awkward. He's not scary. Huh? 
Well, that's why you gotta look you in the eyes. He looks away, Shane. I can't hold contact with Sarah. him. Sarah. Oh, good. No. Ah, do it. Okay. Okay, Nicole, yes, question. So if one four is cis, GA is, why is it wedge E? What? Which one? Nicole? Like for the, for number one? Okay. Uh, like you put that, that one's one three cis, so it's E, E. And I just don't understand why that bottom wedge is also E. Because one, one, three, four. So we're talking about chair formations, right? Cool. Got that? Yeah. So the, these are not in chair. I'm not going to draw them in chair because I hate drawing chair. So that's where the chart comes above. So the trans. So one, four, axial, equatorial, or ac uh, axial, equatorial, equatorial, axial. Or axial equatorial or axial equatorial equatorial or axial axial are going to be cis and trans in this order. So since one and four are trans, right? They have the same thing. Okay, so that's why you put E. Yep. That's why. Okay, thank you. Cool. They mess with my sound box. That's why you gotta drink hear them. That sucks. It's for the angle, present strain, and cyclopropane. Okay. So what's cyclopropane? Cyclopropane. What is it? Triangle. This guy is very special. He is the smallest ring structure we have. So guess what? He's questioned a lot. Hint, hint, wink, wink. No, he has the highest angle strain. Each angle here is 60 degrees. If I were to not have this guy, this guy, and this guy, right? Actually, I'll draw him over here. Let's undo that. Boom, 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 boom. Let's draw him in red. He could be that, or no, he's technically just that. Just that. What's the angle strain there? From this? No. From here to here, 109.5. Which one's bigger? 60 or 109.5? Which one does he want to be in? Cyclo or that guy? Which one? This guy, right? He wants to be in the larger angle, angle strain, correct? So cyclopropane has the most angle strain of all cyclo groups. It literally does not want to exist. It wants to break apart into its propane components. Good. Because of this, it has high torsional strain, right? Because the H's, you have one H going up, one H going down, one H going up, one H going down, one H going up, one going down. Or those are hypotheticals, right? So you can only have one go up or down. You can't have both. I'm just drawing straight up laid down. No, I hate the stupid zoom. There we go. And then you'd also have equatorial carbon, correct? So use your model gifts and make a cyclo propane for me. Hello. Wait, Shane. Yeah. Why does it why does it have high torsional strain? I'm going to explain that. Okay. 
I'm gonna give the people in my room to use a model kit. So I can show you. So the easiest one. And just put hydrogens on every op every one possible. Is it fun playing play twice? Huh? It's fun, you play twice. <laughs> it's fun to play two different ones for three. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So this is the structure looks like. I'll show you guys so I can see myself. It looks like a mirror. Ah, nope. Pin me spotlight. Okay. So here's cyclopropane. What's going on is can this molecule turn? Is there any way I can bend this molecule? Right? You can't bend it all, right? So there's no way I can turn because torsional means turning, right? So there's no way I can turn the molecule in which the H's are interfering with each other, correct? Yeah. Yes, lower torsional strength, the molecule can bend the itself, that twist to become less torsional strength. That's why cyclohexane can become a boat, a chair, Another another form. Could can you turn? You, you turn it. This how you can't turn. You can't really turn them, right? Because these hydrogens are always interfering with each other. So the hydrogens are theoretically eclipsing each other, or they're bumping into to each other, right? So you can't really turn because they're always doing that. If someone wants to go up and someone to go down, you can't. And because this happens, you try turning too much, what happens? It breaks and goes to its happy form. Correct? Make sense? I broke it because I turned too much. High torsional strength. It depends on the molecule. You look like that. For example, chair, the chair diagram should have no torsional and no stair. Cyclopropane only has torsional strength, has no stair. So you think it would have steric strain because the hydrogens are interfering with each other, right? The electron clouds the hydrogen, but that doesn't matter because torsional strain takes over. The molecule will bend and twist to break bonds to separate as much as possible before steric strain can interfere. Because torsional strain has more power than uh, steric strain does. That makes sense. Makes sense, Athena? Athena. I'm still a little confused, but. Which part? Just on why the torsional strain is high. So, that's the monocle again. I'm going to turn this molecule until it's far as away as possible. Right? It broke. There you go. I fixed torsional strain by ma making it cycle anymore. Correct? That's how. No. Because it can turn. This can turn. This can turn. It says can turn, right? Low torsional strain. Well, there's some, yes, but lower. This would be an example of
of steric strain. Tend to be fix it, but well, because these are interfering with each other, right? Question comes at 50. But you can fix it with functional. Does that make some sense? Yeah. So the steric is like a cis molecule where the hydrogens are like touching? Yes. So steric, you're going to see more on cis and trained hands. So two cis or two axial are going to have steric strain because they're interfering with each other or next to each other. The electron clouds are doing, right? They're kind of repelling a little bit. That's what's going on. Make sense? Cool. My face go away. Good. Okay, ring flip. So with ring flips, what you do is you first want to label what these molecules are. So this guy right here, it's one of those confusing ones. Is it coming out of angle at all? Is there a slight angle coming off of that guy right there? Equatorial axial. Nope, equatorial. If it, has a, if it has an angle at all, it's not straight up or down, right? It's automatically equatorial. Axial. So flip it, all right? It technically flips in this direction. So he already drew the arrows for you. This guy goes straight up. This guy comes out. Yeah. Axial, equatorial. Axial, equatorial. What? No. These lines don't have to be there. They have to be there. He just did it for the first one. He literally just copied and pasted the symbol over and over and over again. Yeah, no, it's fun. Okay. That goes on. Now they're both equatorial. So boom, boom. Equatorial, equatorial. Axial, axial, axial going up, axial going down. It's making some sense or no? Yeah, that's where it's kind of, it's where the fusing part, it's waiting for someone else. Jesus, way of thinking about this. So I was wrong in yesterday's video. It looks like the molecules break, but they actually don't. Anyone in the inside will come onto the edge, right? And the edge technically goes in the middle now. So it goes here to here. So this guy's on the edge, right? He technically is going to go in the middle. Nope, he doesn't. This is so stupid. I hate flipping. I hate visualizing things in my head. This molecule is going to flip it over. So he's on this side, right? That tip's there. Same tip right here, right? That guy right there technically goes on the other side. So he's technically flipping, right? Technically, it's flipping this way. Huh? I can't draw a 3D. Oh, it's flipping like Yeah. The OH is coming towards me. It's flipping over. Yeah, exactly. That's how that works. No. This one right here, all right? But it flips, it goes in opposite ends because there are two middle ones. The middle ones come to the outside and you flip those. I have, I am, I forget what it's called, but I can't visualize in my head. So visualizing these things without draw, making molecules, like the model kits, very hard. Yeah, is it a chair? Toss it. You know, so well, you put it in. That was wicked. 
Chair. Nope, that doesn't work. Okay. Yeah, one goes up, one goes down. Okay. Here's your chair formation. All right? Both these guys are what? Editorial. Correct? See that? Or to flip it. So these guys are the edges, right? This would go up and down. And this would go up and down as well. So now they're X, now they're on the opposite ends, right? Because they were on the edges, down the edges again. There we go. Yeah. And this way. Well, eyes on my screen. They can see me still. Cool. Take yours off. Give it to him. Do yours there. Yeah. Okay. Any questions? Guys, zoomies. I think we're good. Okay. Just questions asked. Get a question. What's the role? More carbons means, huh? No, I just didn't do them all. Wait, there's a little? Nope. Yep, okay. Rule for heat of combustion is more carbons, right? More boom, right? That's why we use propane instead of so we use propane inside the gas containers because we don't want to blow up our grill when we cook our hamburgers on the 4th of July, right? But we use octane inside of cars to go really fast, right? You wouldn't put in oct you wouldn't put an octane inside a grill and try to cook hamburgers because you're gonna blow the grill up. So more carbons means more heat of combustion. So it literally goes A, B, C, D. E, F, and G. Yep. No, this is heat of combustion, which has to do with amount of carbons. So since propane has the least amount, it has the lowest amount of heat of combustion. Does these make sense? Yeah. Yes. Okay. The opposite is true when we talk about ring strength. Propane is the most. G followed by F. Then what? Oh, as you get closer to cyclohexane, you go close to zero. So it's the lowest. That's low. Technically, it's C and it's B. There is a memorization thing. Yeah. So this is 6.5, 6.3. Reason being is because having more carbons means you're closer also closer, closer to 12 carbons, which is also zero as well, right? Having 12 carbons also makes you zero. So heptane is closer to hexane and the 12 carbon structure, right? Well, pentane is only closer to hexane, so technically it's a bit bigger and ring strain. Okay. Next up, it's... D, 
And because Grubbs is an asshole, G. G again. Yeah, I know. There is no E. Yeah. Yeah. Grubbs is an asshole. I know. OK. I had him two years. He already had me on LinkedIn. So yeah, what can you do? <clears throat> the reason being, because there was a chart online you can find where propane and nonane are both three away from cyclohexane, correct? So it kind of repeats itself. Cool. Zoomies? All good. Cool. This one might be in your exam. He likes doing weird, weird, weird ones like that. And since she pops up twice, he's only going to put he's going to put that in there and make that pop up in the exam because he does that, guys. Because you guys don't do the reviews enough, so he does it on purpose. So, fifteen might pop up in the exam. I don't know. It could be. Cool. So we're doing a gauche projection. No, you're right. Sorry, gauche. New in projection, right? So which new in projection has the most? So I've seen ME before, but what's ET on B? What? Someone said something. What's um, on B there? What is ET? Well, ET is in all of them. Is it what? It's in all of them. Oh, okay. Uh, I just noticed it in B specifically. Yeah. It's ethyl. So it's going on here. You're visualizing it like this. Or like this. Here's your eyeballs. You're standing at these two. So ET is ethyl. So the ethyl group, right, is this pink guy right there. We're for the least stable, right? So which one do you think is the least stable? So new projections go, right? It goes from total put, right? Which is for this example, with both with the methyl groups crossing each other, correct? And a methyl group crossing the um, ethyl group, right? Total eclipse like eclipse of the sun, right? When the moon front goes in front of the sun. Blocks it. You have a partial eclipse, right? Or a total eclipse where it fully blocks it, correct? Which one's cooler? Total, right? So which one has technically cooler or has more, more energy to do things is the total eclipse where it's totally blocked, right? Which is big, big molecules are blocking big molecules, right? There's also eclipse, which is different than total eclipse, in which, like for example, hydrogen be blocking a methyl group, right? They're right on top of each other. That's still considered a eclipse. Right, but it's not a total eclipse because it's not the biggest molecules blocking each other. Up next, second highest energy, the third highest energy are gauche projections, in which you have molecules like this, these guys, close to each other, and their electron clouds are bumping into each other. Right, so this is an example of a gauche projection. Right, same thing here. Same thing here. Same thing here. Same thing here. Can you um, list all ghost projections in these stable um, forms? Sorry, say that again. Can you list the stable and least stable forms in order? Yes, I can. I can do it better. I can look Google and look them up for you. Thank you. Thank you, Shane. What? I have to head out. You have to head out. Why? I have to do some other stuff too. Mm. I know, but thank you. Are you gonna do um, a study session possibly next week before the exam? I can only do Tuesday because I have a club meeting. Uh, Wednesday. Monday. Sorry, uh, Monday. Monday night. I have a club meeting Monday, right? So I can only do a study session Tuesday. Yeah, okay. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yep.
What does make any sense? Yeah, they're all ghosts. Oh, you bastard. Fine, open it up. Why is there a capping flint? I don't like that. That's mean. No, it's not. Yeah, he looks angry. There we go. Okay. So they just call it semi planar, right? Or center planar instead of total eclipse, right? It just depends on the instructor. Gr uh, Grubbs would say total, uh, total eclipse. But that total eclipse is the same thing as center planar. Sin means same, and periplanar just means same thing crossing. Right? There you go. So it's the highest energy to the total eclipse. A partial eclipse is when, like, for example, this methyl group is kind of being blocked by hydrogen, right? But it's not, it's not the two biggest molecules blocking each other. That's a total eclipse or a synar planar example. Ghost projections would be them interfering, and the lowest one is anti. No, I don't want to ace my exam because that sounds bad. If you suddenly you're trying to sell me something, do not try selling me something. Oh, now you want to work, you bastard. Stupid website thing. There we go. Okay. I don't want to buy anything. It's free. Use the free one. Don't ever buy things. So the highest ones is uh, totally eclipse and then eclipse and then would it be gauche? Yes, gauche or gauche. Yes. And then, and then anti. So let's go down a little bit. Click here. Nope. Anti is lowest. Oh, century. No, number 12 is what we're looking at. I was looking for the least stable. Highest energy. And they're all ghosts. All right? Because none of them are eclipse. So none of them are on top of each other, right? So you got some ghosts right here, ghosts right here, some ghosts between these three, right? Some ghosts here, some ghosts here, and some ghosts here. No, ghosts in there, they're next to each other. And the electron clouds are interfering. Oh. On top of each other is eclipse. Okay. So, what do you got here? What do you guys think? What's the answer? Least stable. Yep. Yep. That's the answer. The reason it's F is because ethyl group is between two methyl, right? Here, it's just a methyl. So it's not as bad, right? Because the ethyl is only interfering with one methyl instead of both of them. Does that make sense? That's why. Which one's the most stable? Nope, E, most stable. It's only two methyls interacting. And A, D, and E, all same energy. Yeah, look at them. It's all same energy. Yep, see, second loss. Unstable. That makes sense, guys? Zoomies. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. <clears throat> For this one, we have to do is you have to draw the molecule out. Two four dimethyl pentane. So first off. What's the main structure going to be? 
How many, how many carbons is that? One, two, three, four, five. Straight line, correct? Where is the methyls coming off? I'm just filling the molecule out. Do you see that? It makes sense drawing that. Hopefully it does. If not, no problems. Which two carbons? Which two carbons am I looking at? Two and three. So these two. So which one comes first? Two or three? Two. So right here, that red dot is going to be carbon two. The blue circle is carbon three. So what is bonded to carbon two? How many methyls do how many methyls do we have? Which one? Carbon one, sorry, carbon two, right? This guy. How many methyl groups are attached to them? There's two. Correct? Make sense? So two methyl and one hydrogen. Correct? Does that make sense? Yes or no? Cool. Carbon three, the blue circle, has what attached to it? No. What does it attached to it? Two hydrogens and then this thing. This thing's all together. How many carbons is that? One, two, three. What's three carbons? Propane, but propanol. Where is it attached though? The second carbon. That's what branch? Iso, sec, T. They are. That's why I circle them. Molecule, which one? The blue or red one? Okay. Oh, I, yeah, I didn't do that. So when we do that, I can't. Yeah, I just didn't draw them all. Yes, this whole thing. Better? Cool. So that's an example of isopropanol to attach the second carbon. All right? There's three of them. One, two, three. That's isopropanol. All right, pay attention. Yeah. What? Oh, if you want to build it, build it. Okay, then do it. Okay, no, here you're playing with it. So if you look at this guy right here, the second carbon already has two H attached to it, correct? You see that? So even without doing what I just did, you should already know it's two H's there. So what does C have to be then? C has to be this iso what? Propanol. So C is isopropanol. Propanol. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes or no? A little bit in there. Which part is what part confuses you? Okay, which parts? Zoomies, how are you doing? Doing good. This guy, I just circled. What did you just say? Sorry. It's like avoiding the hydrogen. Yeah. Because the hydrogens are, he already added the hydrogens for you because he's nice. Okay. 
because he's trying to tell you, he's trying to show you which where, where to put the isopropyl, because that's the first step of the puzzle here, where to put the isopropyl, right? So isopropyl has to be where C is, correct? Now I'm trying to make the most stable. So I have two methyls and one hydrogen. What should go here? B and D. You want two methyls right next to isopropyl? That would be the that would be the most that would be the most unstable. I want the most stable. So one methyl group has to be with A. You want to be as far away as possible, right? It has to be up here. Methyl. And then it's if it's a it's toss up between B and D. It doesn't really matter. You put the hydrogen here and the methyl here, or vice versa. You could put the methyl here and the H here, it does not matter. It will be the same thing. But A has to be methyl and C has to be isopropyl. Only way to make it work. Be the most, most stable. Make sense to you guys? Yes or no? Okay. What part do you see? Do this or yes? I don't like this. Well, guess what? It's hard. So it takes technically to pop on the exam. Most likely. He pulls word for more word for word from this. So this one might exactly pop up an exam. So yeah. I can erase everything, we do it all over again. Would that be helpful? Yeah, all over again. Cool. Here, yep, there you go. You're good. I'll let you know. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. So that kicks take care of the pentane. Okay. And then I have a methyl. On two and four. And uh, this would be H, 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 H. Okay. Then we're looking at carbon two, which is red, and carbon three, which is blue. What's attached to carbon two? What's attached to it? What is attached to carbon two? Two methyls, right, and this guy, and then one hydrogen. And what is attached to carbon three? Two hydrogens and this whole thing, right? It's isopropyl, yes, because it's, nope, I want bright green. One, two, Three. I have three carbons, which is normally propanol, right? Let's attach the R group at the second carbon, which makes it isopropanol. It's this thing right here. Okay. I'm gonna keep going. Nice and purple. Yeah. Come back down. Get rid of that. Get rid of it. Scroll back down. 
Do, 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 do. How close can I get the dot to the thing? Ah, perfect. Okay. So, okay. C has to be isopropyl because we already have two hydrogens attached to the second, the third carbon in here, right? So C has to be isopropanol, right? And to be the best one, A has to be a methyl group. And B can either be H or methyl, right? And then D will be a methyl or an H, depending on what B is. It, it's either or, right? But A has to be methyl and C has to be isopropyl. Okay. Yep. Fun time. Boiling point. What's the biggest indicator of boiling point? Size. Bigger things boil slower, right? It takes a lot longer to boil a person than it would boil a baby. And I'm talking about animals, not people. I'm not a cannibal. If you think about it, boiling a baby deer, boiling a baby deer would be much faster than boiling a mom deer. So Bambi is easier to boil than Bambi's, Bam, uh, Mam, uh, Bambi's mom. Yeah. I don't know. No, you don't boil meat. Boiling meat is disgusting. That's disgusting. You don't wanna... No, if you boil meat, it's just, it's gonna taste bland. You cook all the flavor out. Yeah, you grill it or you cook it. Okay. So now we figure out which ones boils faster. So, uh, one in cyclo or the one in non cyclo form? Non cyclo, yes, non cyclo is correct. So this would be A, this would be B. The reason being is because of that extra ring strain, the molecule has a bit more energy. So it has to, the, the boiling point has to overcome that extra energy to break the molecule apart. Yep. Yep. Cyclohexane is a fun one. You figure out why. If this guy's the fun one. Find out why. Ha, 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 ha. Good. Christian University. You shouldn't get the joke. Yeah. Yeah. Gauche, right? Molecules are interacting with each other. The electron clouds are, right? That's an example of not torsional strain, but steric strain. So this is false. You can use torsional strain to relieve the steric strain, but it's not what causes gauche to have energy. Gauche only has energy because of torsional strain, right? If I go back to this diagram, one second, I heard a voice. There. Who said something? Anyone in the Zoom said something? Okay, now. So it's a little bit of energy. This little bit right here comes from the steric strain of these carbons. Correct? What makes this guy so much higher is it has portional and steric strain. Newman projections. It doesn't matter. The question was asking about gauche. I want to know why gauche has some, has, has not, it's not fully stable. Why it has some energy? Oh. And the energy is because of steric. Same, because the two molecules are interacting with each other, right? 
Steric means the electron clouds are interact with each other. They're near each other, they don't want to be. It's like two siblings in a car ride. Close that, go here, go, go here. Yep. So gauche projections is an example of steric strain. That one is true. Okay. So gauche, gauche this, quite, this one is worded so bad. Okay. So it's false, false. Ghost projection, ghost interactions occur in all molecules, right? Not just butane. I know, ghost butane isn't a thing. Ghost is just an example of, of a new, ghost only occurs in a new projection, right? You can do a new projection of butane, correct? Which is what this is, correct? But gauche butane really isn't a thing. Yeah, it's worded wrong, that's why it's wrong. What are all of them are false? Oh, they're technically, uh, I don't like that. Just, just I know, so it's false. So gauche butane interaction is only present in acyclic molecules. That's not true. If I were to draw this right here, right? That's cyclic what? Butane. If I were to view it from this direction or this direction or this direction or this direction, right? Or this direction or any of in the angles, correct? In which two carbons line up, you could still get some gauche projections going, correct? So it's able to do it in cyclic and acyclic form. So it's both available in both. You also, also put two periods right there. So he's not fact checking, he's not reading his own thing. So, Zoomies, any questions? I have a question in regards to the bowling points. Um, do you think Grubbs is going to put a question like that and should we memorize those? Um, yes, I would. Flashcards, easiest way to do it. Okay, thank you. He asked for bowling point. He's going, to ask, he's going to ask the bullying point question. You might have to label the numbers, right? So just for like ring strain and uh, combustion, right? The numbers might be beneficial to learn. Just make flashcards real quickly. So that's the best way to do it real quickly. Thank you. Because I don't know if he is going to make you do the numbers. I do not know 100% or not. Cool. So. One, two, three. <clears throat> axial, axial, axial. Great. Okay. Which means, make this guy up, make this guy up. This guy has to be dashed. Because one, two, if they're both axial, they are considered trans. Since one and three are both axial, it's considered cis. Correct? Yeah. One, two. Three. Reason, reason I'm putting one right here is because it's attached to chlorine. That's where the first one goes, right? Yep. And we have to do the bromine and the right there. So that's why. So if I want to make this guy, and so this is axial, axial, equatorial. Correct. What are the only possibilities we have for site for chairs? One, 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 right? One, two, one, three, and one, four. Correct. Why is it not one, four? One, two, three, four. We one, five, right? If I were to count like this, one, two, right? And make this guy, for example, in blue, four, so one, two, three, 
four, five. One five is not a pop, one five is not a thing, correct? So you give it the second lowest number, which is three, because it's that's just how it works for chairs. Nope. Because remember, your options are one, 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 two, one, three, and one, four. Those are your only options, right? So it doesn't fit that. You have to go away with the naming convention and make you give the second smallest number. So one and three are the same thing. So let's make them, um, I don't know, widgets. Boring. There we go. And since one and two, one's axial, one equatorial, I'm going to make it right as well. Is this making sense? I have a quick question. Yes, Mackenzie. Um, why did you start with the, like when you're numbering, why did you start with the CL? The CL is heavier, right? Yeah. That's why. It takes priority. It has a heavier molecule. That's why it's one. Oh, okay. That's why bromine over here is also one. It's heavier than chlorine. That's why. Make sense? Yep, thank you. Jocelyn, ready? Okay. What do you got here? Which one to start with? What's one heavier? Chlorine or oxygen and hydrogen? Chlorine, one. How far away is this? How far away is the oxy, uh, oxygen? Two way. So that's one, three. Correct? How far away is this methyl group from the, from the chlorine? So it's one, three, one, three. Does that make sense? No. Why would it be three over there? What do you say, what do you say Madison? Um, why would it be three and three? So one, two, three, four. One, five, not a thing, right? So you can't have a one, five. So it can't be that. So it'd be one, nope. It would be a one, two, three. Oh, okay, I see where you're coming now. Your possibilities again are one, 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 two, one, three, one, four. Your only possibilities for chair. If it's not one of those, it can't be correct. So you have to get one of those. Does that make sense, Jocelyn? Eight. Yeah. It all this only happens with a chair. Yes. 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 Only chair. Okay. Yep, it works either way. As long as they are, the cis ones are cis and the trans ones are trans. It can be either or. I just prefer it to be wedges because wedges are more fun to draw than dashes. No, nope, you just have to do it. Or you just know that the even ones are the same. So one and four are the same, right? So just memorize that and one and three are the same. We have a question just to be sure. Okay, um, pass it. For the axial and equatorial, it doesn't matter whether it's dash or wedge. Nope. What about the, um, like where you locate the dash and um, wedge? Where they're located and the corresponding to one are. For example, 
this guy right here. So this is equatorial, equatorial, and axial, correct? Yes. Okay. So C, so the green one and three are opposites, correct? Yeah. Does that make sense? Okay. I can make him a wedge. To make him a wedge, this guy has to be a dash. If that's a dash, this guy here also be a dash, right? Or if I wanted to, make him a dash, make him a wedge. Yes, it does. Well, because it have to be at least three away. So you put it right here. You put the chlorine right here. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Okay. That works. Yep. Makes sense. Cool. Okay, I see where you're coming from now. So it has to be like one, three, like three away because it's one dash three, correct? Yes. Okay, that makes sense now. Okay, cool. Jocelyn? No? Okay. One, two, three. This is E, this is C, this is A. <coughs> so it would be, for example, F, O, H. Okay. One, three, four. So equatorial, equatorial, axial. Bromine, bromine, methyl. Um, for the fluorine one, yeah. can you have them all wedge if you wanted to? Yeah, uh, no. Why not? So if you make fluorine wedge, like I did right here, right? Correct? Yeah. See that? Two has to be the opposite of a fluorine because it's one, two. And one, two is EE -E is trans. So if fluorine's wedged, oxygen has to be dashed. And since one and three, one's axial, one's axial, and one's equatorial, they have to be trans. So that's the opposite. I could make fluorine dashed, but making it dashed would make these two wedged. They all can't be wedged. Fluorine has to be the opposite of those two because of where it's located. Okay, okay. and so if they were all like A, 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 then they can be all dashed, for example? No. Okay, I'm confusing myself. Okay, here's how they would all be dashed or wedged. If fluorine was axial, this was axial, this equatorial, then they would all be wedged. Because one, two, three. To be cis, one and two had the opposite. To be cis, one and three had the same. All comes back to this chart right here. We filled it. This chart, okay. one of the biggest takeaways when I study stuff. Hey guys, we're almost done with topic three. Ooh. Oh, no, we're not. Still got a lot more. Which one is? Oh, these ones? Okay. Yeah. 
Due to a large deviation from a normal bond angle of 109.5, cyclopropane exhibits a great deal of torsional strain. Why? You're correct. Why is it false? Yes. Yes. The, well, the, the question is being, is the angle for cyclopropane is 60, right? So due to the large deviation for normal bond angles, 109.5, cyclopropane exists like a great deal of force strength. I think you must keep this. Be, the way it's worded, it's going to be false. Um, the word is deviation, right? It's making it seem like it would be more than 109.5. You can't be higher than 109.5 because that's just it in line dot structure. Oh yeah, yeah, it's right. No, it's torsional strain. It, cyclopropane does not have torsion, uh, steric strain. It only has torsional strain. And this right here, when I talk about bond angles, that's also ring strain, not torsional strain. So you are correct with that. So when I talk about bond angles, it's ring strain, not torsional strain. So if this was ring, it would be true, but it's not, it's torsional. Okay. A distortion from planarity will relieve both angle and that one. True. If cyclopropane, if you pull well, like like cyclobutane, if you break it apart and twist it apart, right, you lower torsional strain and steric strain, or both angle strain, right? Or you have cyclopropane, right? If you break them into this line dot structure, Torsional strain and angle strain go down. So if you break cyclostructure, they become happy. The only one that's not is cyclohexane. Cyclohexane wants to be a ring. No, they're all different. Angle strain has to do with bond angle. Torsional strain has to be able to do the molecule in a turn to fix stuff. Steric strain is when molecules are in each other's plane of existence. Yeah. Molecule can only have angle strain or torsional strain. Yep, they can have both. What's an example? Cyclopropane has both. Having a group in equatorial position creates a ghost interaction, which lowers overall energy. True or false? Is ghost used for chair? Ghost is the Newman projection, correct? Equatorial is chair. They are not the same thing, right? They are not. So you can't use these same words in the same sentence, really. That's why it's false. That's it. Cool. Making sense, guys? Oh, having orbitorial, it would lower energy, yes. And having a gauche would also lower energy, right? Compared to a total, right? So it could be, right? But they are not the same thing. Going down, going down. Please stable. So hint and wing wing. Which one's which what what's the biggest molecule? The guy's circle, right? The isopurple, biggest molecule. Does he want to be axial or equatorial? It must be equatorial, right? But I'm looking for the least, right? So what should I make them instead? So one and five are automatically gone, correct? Up next, what's the second biggest molecules? Those methyls, 
right? So, you want to make, well, if you look at one of them, two's gone because they're both there. Okay. Now, three and four. We got to look at this guy. Correct? One, two, three. If he is axial, what does two have to be? Equatorial. And then three would have to be axial, correct? So which one's that? That's how you do that. One is most stable, yes. But it's not possible because the way our structure is, it's, right? But if you work for the most stable, yes. So, yes, it is most stable. Yeah. Have a question? Yes, I can explain more time, Athena. I feel dip already. I've only been here for two hours, guys. Come on. Okay, I think you ready? Least stable. The biggest molecule, which is circled, is isopropanol. To be stable, we want it equatorial, correct? But we are looking for the least stable. So we want it to be axial. So we have to eliminate all of them, but are equatorial, correct? Okay. Then we use this diagram right here, technically also two, because our methyl groups are second because one of those should be axial as well to make it least stable. That's why you can eliminate two. Now that's from three and four, we look at a little picture here. He's the biggest, second biggest, and then he's four. There we go, that's what we have. So, let's make him axial. Since one and two are trans, right? He has to be equatorial and he has to be, no, he's axial, he's equatorial, my bad. Since, yeah. Wait, let me make three the right answer. Trans would be both the same. Yeah, no, he would be. It would be axial, axial, equatorial, which shows four. Oh, that's right. So four is the answer. Because one and two are trans, which means they have the same thing because one, two for trans is the same thing. And then since one and four cis it has to be the opposite because that's the way the chart works. Does that make sense, Athena? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So here's an angle. And what does E stand for? Energy. So P and V, highest energy, correct? S is? Q and U are second lowest, and R and T are second highest. Knowing that, we have to label these guys. I'm going to make it a little bigger, a little bigger so we can see diagrams. So which two show methyls interacting, uh, overlapping? The third and fourth one. Third and fourth one, yes. Yep. 
So, but this one right here. Aren't they overlapping in the first one too on the like side? Yeah, I was just gonna say that one too, right? Okay. I'm trying to find P first, right? And P, P yes, I know. But I'm looking for the highest energy one first, right? Which shows a true eclipse, which is where all the methyls and all hydrogens are over overlapping. That's what I wanna do first, right? That's what I'm looking for. So yes, this right here does show it. This right here also shows, shows it, but not as much. So this guy is both P and V. They're the same. Does that make sense? Because it's highest energy. It's blue. These guys right here do show overlap, which is eclipse, right? But it's not a total eclipse, it's a partial eclipse, which is would be the second high end. So ROT or RT. Right? You can put either one there. That's why I put both in there. Put either R. Okay. Which one is the lowest? The last one is lowest, right? Because these guys are as far away. These guys are as far as away. These guys are as far as away. This is S. These guys are far away, but you have that going on. So that would be an example of Q or U, because right here is gauche, correct? Here's also gauche. So you'd have Q or U. That's it. Make sense? And then go back here. So for Q, which was how many ghost projections? I'm gonna do it. Guys, write down. Let's do really quick. Here, here, here. Two and zero. Go back where I labeled them, and then count, and you'll see that. Okay. Okay. Topic three is done. You guys ready for topic four? You can head, that's fine. I'm good. Okay. Time to define words. So, heading out to Athena. Yeah, there's only 17, but a lot of more defining definitions. Let's take time to explain. So, enantiomers, here's what they are. Enantiomers are stereoisomers, which means they have chirality, which means RS, they have RS stuff, right? That's stereoisomers. So, stereo. just means RS. So antiantimers are stereoisomers that are non-superimposable mirror images, right? So they are mirror images, but they're still non-superimposable. Non so they are mirror images that are non-superimposable. So it looks like confusing, but that's just what the definition is. So they are mirror images, right? But non-superimposable. So diastereomers can be stereoisomers, right? Which is RS and are non-superimposable. And are non mere If 
they also can be cis and trans. Here's how the best way to think about it. That's the definitions he's going to quiz you on. Here's the best way to think this out. If I have an R, the enantiomer is S. If I have an S, the enantiomer is R, right? Diastereomers, if I have RR, the diastereomers will be RS or SR. It's any combination that is not the exact opposite, correct? If I have two cis's, right? The diastereomers would be a cis trans or a trans cis. You think of diastereomers as like the step between being polar opposites. And answer is the polar opposite. Diastereomers is the step in between being polar opposites. One thing stays the same, one thing changes. That's how you would just, that's how you identify it on the structure. So absolute configuration is just the confirmation of things, mainly has to do with RS, really. It's the confirmation and arrangement of atoms. And then the relative, right, uh, would have to be things like um, D or L. So octopactivity is relative, or well, absolute would be RS or cis and trans. Yes, see ya. I know. Okay. okay. Confirmations are same compound. But you can rotate, rotate it. Optimal activity basically means it can just rotate polarized. Lights. So they can rotate polarized light, it has optical activity. If it can't rotate, if it gets polarized light, it does not have optical, optical activity. Optical activity will have either be a plus or minus. If it's a plus, it's D. If it's a minus, it's L. Meso compounds. Oops, I got to go down a little bit. Sorry about that. Meso compounds have to have two or more chiral centers. They have to be opposite stereoisomers. And they have to have a line of symmetry, so they'd be symmetric. If it has all those, it's a meso compound. We submit mixtures are. 50% going to be R, 50% going to be S. Basically, it's, 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 a, it's a toss up between if you're finding the S form or the R form. That's going to be 50 50, right? That's racemic. That's basically what racemic means. Okay. Yeah, to three. Or be technically be a one to one mixture, right? So it means basically you have equal parts R, equal parts S. So it's not just the same thing. So it's just B cells, but so it has the power center R S, but it's not symmetrical in it. So it could be, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any questions of those? Okay, we have three chiral compounds. They are all what? SSS. 
right? What's the enantiomers? What's the exact opposite of SSS? R, R, R. Yeah. What are the data standards? We can have S, S, R, S, R, R. We can have, then we can have, yes, R, S, S, R, R, S, R, S, R. And then we can have, oh God. No, R, R is an answer. That's the only combination that's not. S, R, S, S, R, S. So all of these are diastamers of SS because those are all the combinations that are not in the answers. That's what a diastamer is. Yeah. Then how many stereo isomers do we have? To figure this out, it's just a simple math problem where X is equal to 2N. Oops, nope, sorry. Clear. Zoom black. X is equal to two to the n power. And the n power is how many chiral carbons we have, right? So n would equal three here. So what's two to the third power? What's two times two times two? Four times two is eight. There's three, there's three chiral centers. So somebody stare at ice myself. You do X to the two N power. power. Okay. 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 First things first. Find how many chiral we have. Chiral here, chiral here. One, two, three, four. RS. He's an R. One, two, three, four. Going this way. Would be R, but look. Our lowest one priority is a wedge, right? So we have to flip it. So it's SR, RRS. Make sense? Yep. Guess what? If you, if you have to do confirmations on these things, you have to draw them out. And it will look like a methyl coming off. So we have a methyl group. And then we have a bromine going up. It's going straight up. Then we have a carbon going like that. And then we have one going to back. And since we have a bromine going straight down, there we go, like that. I know, I hit them too. One, two, R, one, two, S. So also R, S. This one is R, S, R, S. We have a Carl center here, Carl center here, Carl center here. One, two, should be what? R, correct? However, remember that going across like that, right? Is it going up theoretically speaking? So our H is also going up as well, right? Which we can't have because that's our fourth position, correct? Because this is technically a wedge and this is technically a wedge. Those ones right there are technically wedges. That's just how Fisher projections work. 
Yes. So it'd be an S. Yep. So he would be an S, he would be an R, he would be an S. I think Grubb's messed up. He said it was R, which it can't be. E. Okay. Are you saying it's like this instead? Are you saying it's one, two? Actually, yes, you are correct, actually. So that would be R. And that'd be one. And then down here would be, nope. It would be, oops, I messed up. I dong dong fucked up. One, two. Should be R, technically that'd be S. And then that would be one, two. Would be S, would be R. So it's actually R, S, R. Why? This carbon right here is double bonded to an oxygen. Since it is double bonded to an oxygen, right? They have, it's basically, you assume it has two bonds to an oxygen, which makes it much heavier than the other one. One, two, three, four. The S, now the R. S, R. Okay. One, two. Should be R, but it's S. One, two. If we go this way, it should be R. Nope. We avoid going four, right? So we don't do it with the pink. So for example, pink, right? We wouldn't go this way because we would be going through four, right? We want to avoid four like a play. So we go, one, three, two, not one, four, two. That's one, three, two. Now, how would you reverse? No, it's clockwise. Going like this. Yeah, clockwise is up. Oh, never mind. Yep, it would be S. My bad. So we, we don't see a four. My bad. Sorry. We got one, four, two. It's a fun long day. Okay. Okay. Okay, Jocelyn, you, 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 it's you, excuse me. Okay, one, two, three, four. We go this way. We don't, we don't flip because H's are in the back and we go through four to get to two because going through four is easier. Yes. There's no flip. It's easier to go through four than it is to go through three. That's why. Zoomies, we have any questions? No. Okay. Why do you sound so tired or mad at me? Oh, no, sorry. Okay, let's make sure. Okay. Got a chiral here, chiral here, chiral here, chiral here, chiral here. That's it. Those are all your chiral centers. Using purple, because I have no hate purple for any reason. It's not that it's used too much here. There is no chiral here because there's too many double bonds. Would be no chiral here because there's too many double bonds. No chiral here, double bonds. Double bonds here. So anything I just did in purple, you can't have chiral there because double bonds can't equal chiral, correct? Okay, anything I do in pink, right? Things I'm circling in pink cannot be chiral because they are either 
CH2 or CH3 molecules. And you can't have that because it means your bond is two hydrogens, two or more hydrogens, right? And to be chiral, you have to be bonded to four different things. So all the things I just circled in um, pink technically are bonded to more than two things that are similar to each other. So pink are not the chiral, they are a chiral carbons. Anything I highlight, I, circle, I circled in purple are double bonds and double bonds are automatically not chiral. This one? Okay. Got right here. So, carbon bonded to a hydrogen, bonded to CH2, CH, uh, sorry, CH, CO2H. Going this way, CH2, bonded to CH2, bonded to CH2, right? Going down here, CH bonded to nitrogen. That's why it's chiral. Okay. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. There you go. Still recording. That was really bad. Okay. We have one right here. We have one right here. We have one right here and one right here. So we had five here and we have four here. Wait, can you guys hear me? I'm not talking myself anymore. That's not good. Zoomies, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Interesting. My headphone turned off for some reason. Interesting. Okay. Here. Okay. My headphones down to me. Zoom me. So if you have questions, just put them in chat so I can see them and then respond to them. Because right now I can't hear you guys. Why? This one? Because it has two hydrogens coming off. Okay, you can hear me? Cool. You can hear me now. The rain has gone. Five blind mice, three blind mice. The answer is four. Yes, that one's four. Cool. So five, the label of things are RS. One, oops. It does, but what's gonna happen is the people who are watching the video later are going to hear me twice in a row. And they don't want that to happen at least. That's gonna be weird, correct? Oh, yeah, cool. So one, two, three, and exactly four is right here. One to two, that's clockwise, is what? R. Blue. One, two, three, four, right? Technically, technically you have to draw this one out. Technically two is up here, one's right here, four is right here, and three's right here. If we going this way, it would be S. I just drew it out like this. Because it's kind of hard to see, see how it works. But going this way, technically it would be going S. So it's RS. That makes sense? Yep. 
B one, two, three, four. I'll just draw it like this. Technically, it would be one, two, four, three, going backwards, right? However, you would make it an R. And the other one on the opposite side would be technically an S, because it's just pretty much the same. Oh, uh, we can test it though. Don't make any assumptions. One, two, four, three. That would be three, one, two, four. Go this way, it would be also R, the RR. Okay. And then C, does C have any chirality? No. Nope, there's no chiral carbons with C. Nope, because those are both two CH2 bonds. So if you, if you want to make this guy right here, this red one right here, a chiral, it can't be because it's bonded two CH2s. Both equal, both, both same thing, so it can't be. You look tired, what's up? Okay. okay. Oh. Okay, which compounds are chiral? A, B, and C, so which one is it? B is the only chiral one. A is not chiral because? Line of symmetry, it's a meso compound. And meso compounds cannot be chiral because nope, A is just meso. No, C is not chiral at all. C cannot be chiral. Meso have to have chiral components. Meso has to be opposite chirality and line of symmetry. C has no chirality whatsoever. So it can't be miso because it has no chirality, right? It is symmetrical, right? But it's not that. So which ones have, which one can have diastereomers? C can, right? Because it could be, they can be, if I, if I make this one a dash, right? That's technically a diastereomer, correct? How? I can just move the molecule around, right? These chiral, right? Chiral comp compounds always have diastereomers. And then guess what? Even meso compounds have. Every molecule that has RS or cis trans has diastereomers. However, the only one that has an antimer is the only one with chirality, and that is B. Because only having only being chiral compounds can have any antimers. Meso compounds can't. And non-chiral compounds cannot have any antimers. So C cannot have an antimer because it's not chiral. A can have an antimer because it's technically meso. That makes some sense? I'm gonna skip 10 because I don't want, I can't think of a molecule off the top of my head. So I'm just gonna skip it because I'm too tired. Oh, it already has a molecule up there. Oh my God, nice, cool. Thanks, fun. I like that. Already, already gave you a molecule. I thought I thought I had to make one up. It's just a molecule. So what's a structural isomer? Same chemical formula, but different like combinations. So one example could be this guy. And he, just, he looks kind of angry. He's gonna put some eyes right here, and he kind of like. And angry like that. There we go. An antimer, right? Well, he did the exact opposite, correct? An antimer is a what? Mirror images that are not superimposable, correct? So, what's the mirror image of this guy? Yep. So, dashed, wedged. It's the exact opposite but they cannot be lined up on top of each other, correct? And then diastereomer, just basically different connections. So it's, they're not mirror images, so it wouldn't flip it. And you would just kind of make, since, since this guy is trans, 
you would make this guy cis. Does that make sense? Cool, cool. <clears throat> oh no, we have to draw the compound. Uh, I don't like drawing the compound. I mean, the fact that it goes all the way down to like up a zillion of them. I'll do, I'll do the first three. Thank you. You want to do all that? No, no, no. Okay, up to the first three. Yeah. Yeah. So cyclopropane. So that would be this. And one, two. So, and we'd make them cis, which means we would both make them like that, correct? Hint, hint, wink, wink. If you have two molecules right next to each other and they're both facing their, their same direction, right? Either like both wedges or both dashes, correct? So like these red ones right here, the other cis. That automatically makes it automatically. If, you, if this one has an R, this one has to have an S. So this one is an S. This one has to be an R. They're just always opposite each other. Hopefully, you have seen that pattern by now. If not, or, yeah, because these guys are these guys are meso compounds. So yes for meso. Check. Wedge dashes. These are no for me, so. so. It's like a cyclobutane, right? So we got this right here. That's one example. Two examples. These guys have planet symmetry and they would both be meso compounds. These guys would not be. And here are your two examples. And there was a there was a not the meso. Why? Because mesos have to be symmetrical, right? So one thing's going up and one thing's going down, right? So if I had my one of my legs going up and one of these going down. I'm not symmetric, right? Yeah. Hey, and this one's different. This one has a one three. So I have an angle here and I'll have one here, right? So is this guy miso? I mean, it could be symmetric, right? But if you do the confirmation, this guy's R and this guy's R. Actually, they're not even chiral. Sorry, they're not even chiral. My bad. No, the, the, these ones are chiral. It's just because we move the thing a little bit, right? Stops it from being chiral. Because this right here is a C2 bond. This right here is a C2 bond, right? So if we're looking for this carbon right here, it's bonded to C2, uh, two, two CH2s, two CH2s, right? So it's part of the same thing, it can't be chiral. It's not four different things, right? So no, and this one's also no because it's not chiral. You have to be chiral, you have to have chiral centers to be miso. Uh, Why well, as well go through this real quickly. I'm not gonna explain it. I'm just gonna draw them out and then just show you guys. You guys can just pay attention. So one, two, this would be miso. This would not be miso. This guy is different. This guy would be theoretically miso. 
and he would not be this over here. What? Why is why is three different? Right. Well, if I draw the if I draw the structure better, it should make more sense. Let's draw let's draw it better. So here's pentane, right? Let's make this a wedge, and this guy's a wedge, right? Technically, these got this would have like this would be a different this right here would be a different conformation than this guy, and it has a line of symmetry. So by definition, it's been so. Cyclohexane can be miso, so oops. Because you can draw it like this, so it is miso, and it is not trans miso. Oh, one three. Right here, it should be one three. So I should draw a version of it. That's a better version of it. That is also miso, and this one's out. One four is not miso, and it's not miso in both forms. So typically speaking, you can never have a miso compound as trans. You can only have miso compounds as cis. Hint, hint, wink, wink. Yeah. I went quickly through that, but there's just a lot of problems and I'm kind of getting tired, kind of tired. Okay. These are just RS. Um, you guys already have practice with this, so I'm not going to do it. 13 is more fun, though. Okay. One and three. Right. What's the difference between one and three? Hint, hint, wink, wink. This one will definitely be on your test. Are mirror images of each other, right? Are they superimposable? So they are mirror images that are non superimposable. Miso. Because misos are mirror images, right? That are non superimposable. Which one's the enantiomers? No, enantiomers are. Uh, enantiomers, one second, I have it in my notes. Enantiomers are structural isomers that are non superposable mirror images. Yes. But there's a line of symmetry. There is a line of symmetry here, isn't there? Yeah. Right? Or. Yeah, so there's a line of symmetry, which makes it miso. It should not be. So, yes. So, technically, which ones are enantiomers are two and four. These are enantiomers, right? Because these are mirror images, two and four are mirror images of each other, right? Because their things are just flipped and they're not superimposable, right? But there is no line of symmetry. That's why. Here, we found our mesal compounds. We found our one, our one enantiomer, right? What's everything else? Diastereomer, 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 diastereomer. Because they're all just different combinations of everything else, correct? So one and two are diastereomers, one and four are diastereomers, two and, uh, two and one are diastereomers, two and three are diastereomers, and two and four are diastereomers. That's just how it works. Any questions? Cool, cool, cool. Zoomies, how are we doing? Remember, I can't hear you since I've been chat real quick. Yep, they're good. I have five people in chat right now. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. 
So we have A, B, C, D, and E. So this one looks stupid. So let's explain what it's asking right here. So here's your answer choices, right? And it's just trying to say which one is equatorial, which one is not, right? So if I'm doing axitorial, um, axitorial, what am I asking for? If you're asking for these guys, you're asking for a chair, correct? Jocelyn? If you're asking for axial equatorial, you're asking, you're asking for a chair diagram. That's the only time we use those words for chair diagrams, right? So do you wanna draw a chair diagram? Then draw one, because I don't like drawing them. I don't like drawing them. I'll show you an easy way of doing it. This guy's your biggest molecule, so he's be one, right? And then how far away is each of the guy from him? Three. So one, three, one, three, one, three. No, I don't wanna draw the chair. Yep. I don't like drawing chairs. Because if you draw your chair bad, you can mess up a lot. So that's why I'm gonna try to show, I'm gonna show you ways of not drawing the chair. Okay, so this one and this three. So for example, this guy right here, this is T butyl. So that's T butyl. I'll use uh, blue for ethyl. Here's your ethyl, and I'll use hot Barbie pink for a methyl, right? So you guys can color coordinate it because I know you guys love to do that. I've graded you guys' work before. You guys love colors. Okay. So, and we want to make the lowest energy possible, right? We want the lowest energy possible. So, to be lowest energy possible, the biggest group right there, number one, has to be what? Equatorial axial for chair diagrams. Big molecules want to be equatorial. So we can already eliminate any of them that make, oops, that's the wrong one. We can eliminate any of them that make it axial, correct? I already made half the answers. Okay. So the red one and the blue one, the T butyl and the ethanol, right? They are sister trans. They're both wedges, correct? That makes them cis. So for one, three, being cis means you have the exact same thing. So which one does it make T-butanol and ethyl the same thing? A, well, the ones that have not crossed out. A and C, right? So F's gone. So all we have to look, figure out now is if methanol should be E or should be A. Should be A. The answer is C. There you go. Yeah. This guy is cis, he's cis, right? They are technically both meso compounds, if you do it correctly, right? So they cannot be enantiomers, they cannot be diastereomers, but they're both meso compounds, correct? Which means there is some relationship between them, right? However, this guy right here is one, three. This guy here is one, two. Are they identical molecules? So they have to be, what's the only other option? Structural. They are both meso, though. The only reason I know they're both meso is because I did those examples above. It's literally one of the examples above. But because they're meso, they cannot be diast. They, they could be diastereomers, but they are not because they would be exact opposite of each other. That's why you were diastereomers. But they're not enantiomers because meso compounds do not have enantiomer versions of themselves. I hate this question. 
Yeah. Nope. Because we have to go over it. But I'm going to explain it in a way that somebody cannot draw it. Okay, you see those two Neumann projections? Well, there's three, yes. But you see how there's two of them put together. Ah. Uh, That'd be quickly because this does computer just shut off at 10:30, uh, so I just make sure I get through them all, well, and also have time to download my download PowerPoint. So one, two, three, four, five, six. What are those? Those are chair diagrams. If you see Newman projections like this, you have a Newman projection as a chair diagram. So going off here, this guy right here is coming off carbon one, right? And going two away, two, three, we have a methyl group. So this guy right here is one, three, right? And since they are both going out, theoretically speaking, correct? They are both going to be that. And since we've seen we've seen hexane before as one three, and when hexane one three, and they're both technically the same molecule, it is miso. Yep, chiral, a chiral. How'd you know? Yep. Exactly. Yep. It would be, but it being MISO makes it more important. Nope. MISO is not a chiral. Miso is misos have chiral components. Nope. Miso compounds and miso compounds. They are they have stereo centers, right? But a chiral compounds are compounds with no stereo centers. Zero, no stereo centers. They have no chiral carbons. Okay, that's how you do that. But yes. Also, because technically for C, what's going on with there? That's one four, right? So if I just draw the, if I draw one four, right? If I just draw one four methyl, correct? Here's where a chiral carbon would be. However, it's bonded to two CH2 molecules, correct? And if I see that in pink instead. So that'd be a chiral because it's bonded to similar two similar things, right? That's why it's a chiral. And I go be a chiral because it's one three. And it's on it's on the same side, so it's not a mirror image. Okay. Lastly, are you pack names? We got to count the carbons, make it a big big. Whoa, that's really big. That's really small. Let's not use the pen next time. Let's use just, just the mouse. IUPAC, it's just naming. IUPAC just is normal naming. That's, that's all that's what IUPAC stands for. IUPAC is just normal name. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Non aim, right? Either way, one, two, three, four, five, six. It doesn't matter which way you name it, they're both the same thing. So it'll be four, six, di, 
ethyl nonane. Huh? There is no hyphen between eth diethyl and nonane. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Doesn't matter which way you go. You can, you can either you count it this way, or if you wanted to, you could count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Doesn't really matter. Same thing. You do red or green. But you have you want to make this guy smaller, so you'd have two methyl. One, two, three, four. Purple. Oh, yep. Technically, it's one, two, three. One, two, three. So, four, four purple. What? Heptane? Yep. That's cyclopentane, right? Hopefully, as you see that, cyclopentane. Correct. Okay. Um, so we are going to go one, two, four. Reason being is we want we want one and two. We want to have the lowest numbers possible. That's why we do that. Normally, fluorine would be number one, but since we have two ethyl groups right next to each other, those guys. One has the smallest number. So one, two, diethyl, four, floral. Oops, it's U, F, U, F, L, U, R, O, and then Cyclo pentane. Okay. Two, three, four, five. Uh, you awful, awful bastard. Why would you do that? Mm -hmm. So what takes priority? One, two, the ring does, right? So the last name to be cyclo, uh, it's on, sorry, sorry, cyclopentane, right? Correct? Pen. So what you're gonna do here is you're only going to do two bromo, one, Two. Yeah. One, two, brumo butyl cyclopentane. Yes, that's why I said he's bastard. I was the key. And that's why. Why is it that? Because that's coming off. I don't like it. That's why that's why I don't like it. I'm not gonna explain it because I don't have enough time to explain it. I know it sucks, I'm sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, three, six, three, six, di ethyl, two, seven, di methyl. And then octane. There you go. You go to some sleep, you're tired. Drive? Where are you driving? Mm. 
I mean, it's not bad. Get away from here as much as possible. You guys hear me? Hello? Oh God, I have so many questions. <laughs> no, never mind. Okay. Zoomies, any questions as we go? Okay. That is it. Thank you guys for staying. Okay. So, stop sharing. Read.